weather, less than 12. It's late in the evening here, but early in the morning, the following morning with you. Okay, so the fission reactor we want to talk about today, and uh, there's two very good uh, video clips following on from this. So I think once you watch this, go through the notes and watch the video clips, and we'll be done. And this will be reasonably short class, reasonably short class today. Okay, so the problem with, with fission is, okay, we understand the idea that you have a large nucleus and you have a slow neutron, it's important, a slow neutron comes in, gets absorbed, remember, gets absorbed. This now becomes so unstable that it splits into two reasonably equal sized parts and more neutrons. But they are fast neutrons. So you need a slow neutron to get it to absorb and to get the, um, the, the fission reaction going. But there's fast neutrons emitted. And you need these fast neutrons then to cause further fission, to get what we call a chain reaction, where each fission causes another fission, and it keeps going on and on and on from there. And we have to slow down the fast neutrons. So two ways of slowing them down, okay? Uh, traditionally, the first method was using graphite. So if you send neutrons to graphite, the graphite slows down the neutrons and allows more fission to occur. The other type of uh, uh, setup that is used is water, okay, just plain water or heavy water. Now, heavy water sounds dodgy, but all heavy water is you have H2O and you have something called D2O. And this is, this is a kind of a, a, a pretend name for it, okay. In that, instead of using the hydrogen 1 isotope in this, you have the hydrogen 2 isotope, the one with the extra neutron, okay, and you make your water from that and it's called heavy water, okay? Very, very valuable, and it's, it can be used as a moderator as well, okay? So they're both used as moderator, uh, no, sorry, moderator, I didn't mention what a moderator was, a moderator, something that slows down neutrons, so therefore either graphite or uh, heavy water, okay? The advantage of heavy water is that heavy water can also use work act as a coolant, that, that follows true, okay? So let's look at a very basic idea of what, what the reactors look like. Okay, so you have your control rods. You'll see better clips of this in the videos. You have your, sorry, you have your uranium rods or your fuel rods. Okay, so the fuel rods. Okay. Now, between the fuel rods then, you have either heavy water or graphite. Now, we'll, we'll draw it as graphite. That'll be easier. Okay, so you have lumps of graphite. Well, graphite, it's in your pencil. Okay, the lead of your pencil. Okay, so more graphite there. And more fuel rods there. Okay, so basically, and they're called piles because they, it, originally they were a pile of graphite with uranium inside in it. Okay, as we'll see with the uh, with with Fermi's uh, clip later on. Okay, right. You also then have control rods. So you have these control rods that go around the outside of the fuel rods. Okay, they go around the outside of the fuel rods and they can be moved up and down. Okay, so what happens if you move them down? If you move them down, you eliminate the moderator. So any fission that takes place produces fast neutrons. Fast neutrons don't cause a further fission. They get absorbed eventually by the control rods, the metal in the control rod, and the reaction dies, okay, fizzles out. Okay, you need to have the moderator involved for the reaction to keep going. Now, uh, there's a magic number for fission, and it's very similar to the number that we're dealing with at the moment with COVID-19. Okay, so they've, they've made a point in COVID-19 that if on average a person who gets infected infects less than one other person well then eventually the the, the pandemic will, will will die okay the pandemic will die because eventually it just fizzles out exactly the same applies here if for every fission that occurs more than one of the neutrons released cause another fission you have what's called a, a chain reaction and the reaction is actually going to go out of control bomb right or a problem anyhow okay if it's less than one the opposite applies okay if an average less than one it fizzles out okay and it, it stops that's what we want to happen with COVID-19 not what you want to happen in a nuclear reactor for a nuclear reactor you want it to be for every fission you want one to cause it for the fission then you're in control so the ideal number for continuing the reaction safely is for every fission one more fission if for every fission there's less than one more fission, it fizzles out and stops. If for every fission there's more than one fission, you have a probably you have a possibility of a runaway reaction, and and we have the problems that apply from there. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so make sure you're clear on fuel rods mainly uranium, 
control rods move up and down to stop the reaction by removing the moderator from it and the moderator slows down the fast neutrons two possible moderators uh, graphite heavy water heavy water deuterium oxide okay right now what you then has then is that these get hot they, they cause heat okay they cause heat quite simply they heat they cause heat because uh, what, what's producing the fission of kinetic energy these bang off things and we get heat so this heats up gets very hot so what you need to put around it is a coolant okay like you have water in your car engine okay coolant so the coolant comes in here okay gets hot turns into steam and steam goes out here okay steam goes out there right that's it now the steam that goes out can then be used to turn a turbine but the problem is you don't want that steam to turn the turbine because the steam is radioactive okay there would be problems there would be it's, it's in the core it'll be a lot of, of dodgy stuff in it okay so ideally what you do is you put this steam you send this steam through a thing called a heat exchanger okay so a pipe like that and you have another container here with more steam more water coolant coming in so watch what happens okay steam goes in here radioactive steam okay non-radioactive water goes in here the heat from the radioactive steam is exchanged it's given to the uh, to pure the pure water okay the pure water turns the steam goes out here and turns the turbine okay so the heat the role of the heat exchanger is to uh, change the steam from being the steam from radioactive water to being steam from non-radioactive water that can go into the turbine otherwise the turbine turbines become radioactive and so on the turbine then turns in the same way as the turbine is turned by the water open in the Scarra Dam and you generate electricity. So, so <coughs> the only difference with a nuclear reactor compared to an oil reactor or a, a <coughs> gas reactor, okay, or a hydroelectric reactor is how the steam is made. Okay, how the steam is made. The steam is made by nuclear by nuclear fission there. Okay, that's it. That's it. And there will be a concrete shield around the whole lot of it. Uh, for protection and that's it you'll get a really good idea of it from the, the clips that follow anyway okay thanks